So this is the feedback for Crime and Punishment June 2020. Uh, and this is going to take you through the mark scheme and you're also going to think about then your exam paper and think about how you could uh, tweak your technique to move your marks up. Um, so we're going to think about how we answer each question. We're going to go through the mark scheme specifically so you can then weigh it up against your answers. So the first section is Whitechapel. You're going to spend 20 minutes on this section and you've got those three questions to answer. Two of them are only going to take you five minutes. Our first question then, describe two features of the way the Peabody Estate helped to improve housing in the Whitechapel area. So the key thing you need to highlight in your question is the way the Peabody Estate and improved housing. Um, so this is a knowledge question and it gives you that feature one and feature two and you need to be specific, not vague. You also need not just to give any information you know about the Peabody Estate, but it's got to think about how it improved housing. So identify the feature, first of all, and then support it with evidence. So you can see in the mark scheme here, and it's not exhaustive, this mark scheme. So if you pick something that is also relevant, then that will get the mark as well. Um, so here we have the estate consisted of 11 blocks of flats built to replace courtyard slums. Uh, this was a model housing estate paid for the American uh, by the American George Peabody. So the, the feature is the model housing estate. Um, and the specific knowledge is that 11 blocks of flats built to replace the courtyard slum. So you could talk about there, maybe that it was going to improve housing. Also, it's part of slum clearance, um, passing um, of the Artisans Dwelling Act in 1875. So the specific knowledge there is that Artisans Dwelling Act, the slum clearance programme, is obviously going to help improve the quality of housing for people. Um, and obviously, you've also got the estate opened in 1881. That's good detail there. Um, we have flats are available varying in size from one room to three rooms. The rents are reasonable depending upon how many rooms the flat had. Um, and obviously that means that it's going to address that problem of overcrowding. So that can help with the way that it improves housing. It can talk, you can talk about getting rid of rookeries. Um, so like I said, the list isn't exhaustive here, but it has to be the specific knowledge and identify that feature first of all, and then support it with your evidence. So really you should fill up the space that's given to you by the exam board. The next question, the eight mark question. So you must have four paragraphs. Reasons why it's useful, reasons why source A is not useful, reasons why source B is useful, reasons why it's not useful. And then somewhere within that, why it's useful and not useful about the whole source, you need to then cover the content, no more than two examples, because you don't have time, and match that to your specific knowledge. What about that is true? What about that is not so true? And then the nature, origin and purpose. And remember, nature means the type of source. So we remember, for example, if it comes from a newspaper, newspapers are very anti-police at this time. Um, the origin and the purpose, again, why does this make it useful? Why does it limit it? Now, don't just say a source is biased. Don't just identify the nature, origin and purpose. The source will always show you specific opinions of a certain group of people, but it will always be limited on the basis of that. So, you know, who it's targeting, what the key um, information in the source is in relation to the question. Again, what what are they trying to do there? Is it propaganda? Is it the government trying to persuade people? So think and be quite specific about the question. So this question you will see then says, how useful are sources A and B? For an inquiry into the difficulties of policing the Whitechapel area. So if you start talking just in general about source A and source B, you're not going to get the marks. Again, if you only talk about reasons why it's useful or reasons why it's not useful, you're going to limit your marks. If you miss out that nature, origin and purpose, or you miss out the content and the knowledge, you're going to limit yourself to four out of eight marks. So if we look at the mark scheme, one and two marks are available for a simple judgment on utility. Utility means how useful um, and are supported by undeveloped comments. So you might just identify there what type of source it is or the information from the source. Or you might just have rewritten the source as well, um, which obviously isn't a good plan. Three to five marks then, uh, you make judgments. So you say how useful um, on source utility. So on that how useful it is for that inquiry um, and you're giving valid criteria so that looking at content say yes this is accurate because it matches 
um, that I know that um, H Division had X amount of police, that sergeants had to go around because they didn't trust the police, they felt they were lazy, um, and report back and write in their diary specifically what uh, crimes had happened. Or you could talk about Dorset Street, where police, um, if it's in the source, um, where the police you know, didn't go down because the lodging houses made it too dangerous. So it's being that specific with your knowledge is really important. Um, and then their provenance. So this is where like you are limiting yourself in marks if you don't start talking about nature, origin and purpose. OK, comprehension and some analysis of the sources is shown by the selection and use of material to support comments on their utility. So that's why we need the content. That's why we need your knowledge. That's why we need to talk about how useful that makes it and the nature, origin and purpose and contextual knowledge is used directly to support comments on the usefulness. Uh, and finally, six to eight, judgments on the source utility for the specific inquiry are given applying valid criteria or developed reasoning. So it's really covering all of those reasons why it's useful, reasons why it's not useful. Now, um, the markers then are given indicative content that they can use, uh, and you'll see it here. So the usefulness for source A uh, is useful because it shows that individual policemen were often outnumbered as Canavan and 17 others stoned the police constable. So that's directly in the source there. Um, it's useful because it suggests that the police might be violently attacked if they tried to enforce the law. It's useful in the ways uh, the details of the attack suggest the locals would not come to a policeman's aid. The following points could be made about authorship, nature or purpose of the source and applied to ascribe usefulness to the material. It comes from the East London Observer's account of trials held in court, so it's likely to be factually accurate if it's just reporting on the court cases. The case may um, or might have been chosen to feature in the newspaper account in order to make a point about the lawlessness of the area. So upper class newspapers obviously kind of want to reinforce that idea of the dodgy and dangerous East End um, and perhaps might be a little bit more supportive of the police and a little bit uh, less supportive of the people of Whitechapel. Um, knowledge of the historical content should be deployed. And it says Whitechapel is widely regarded as the most dangerous part of London. It's policed by H Division. Policemen walked uh, a specific beat, being checked by their sergeant at regular intervals. Uh, then it does the same for source B. Usefulness could be identified in terms of following points, which could be drawn from the source. Useful because it suggests that criminals found it easy to evade the police, as policemen are unaware um, of the two criminals hiding nearby. The cartoon shows the policing may have been difficult by poor lighting and dark alleyways found in Whitechapel. The caption in the cartoon suggests the police could have been effective if there were more of them. So the main difficulty is the lack of numbers. Following points could be made about authorship, punch, comments on issues of current concern. So the fact this cartoon is published suggests that the number and um, effectiveness of police in Whitechapel is considered a problem, even if they're poking fun at the police. Cartoons are usually exaggerated to make a point. So perhaps the police may not have been as ineffective as it suggests. Uh, and then linking back to knowledge, Whitechapel is an area of poverty. There are many rookeries. So if we remember, those are the really tightly packed housing um, where, you know, you're probably living in one room. It's not very good quality. Um, the streets are narrow and poorly lit, encouraging crime and making policing difficulty. Uh, the limit, limited number of policemen in the metropolitan police is a main concern, e.g. Sir Charles Warren publicly commented on the lack of policemen. And if you remember to the Ripper murders, you could say that they had to request help from the army at that time. So those, again, on the mark scheme, it's not exhaustive. If you come up with other valid points, they will come through and give you the marks for that. The key thing is how far for that six to eight. So if you're judging that it's very useful um, and you're explaining that, then that's going to push you up into that six to eight mark brand. The final question on Whitechapel then is this idea about the detail in the source. Now, this should be easy if you do it in the right way. Um, so it asks you, how can you follow up the source to find out more about the difficulties of policing in the Whitechapel area? So if you just write about something from the source and not the difficulties of policing and you don't focus it on the issue, you're not going to get the marks. OK, that's the bit where most people lose their marks. So um, again, these are just examples. Um, so focus on the issue in the question. All the areas for the question must focus on this and be specific. OK, what type of source? Um, don't just say it's a memoir or a diary. Okay, that is not specific enough. So the detail in the source of Mark scheme says they'd follow up is another police constable arrived. The question they would then ask was, was the policeman lucky uh, that another police constable arrived or was there an arrangement for a constable to get support when walking his beat? So you can see how it's focused in about the difficulties of policing and the lack of policing. Um, 
And it says no mark for a question that's not linked to following up source B, e.g. because it's an interesting question to ask. Um, award one mark for um, the appropriate source. So <coughs> the type of source they look for, H division records. You can't just say a sergeant's diary. It has to be an H division sergeant's diary. And how might this help answer my question? The records would show details of the beats the police walked and how often the sergeant met up with them. And that all is linking back to that another police constable arrived. So it has to all stem from that first question there. So section B then, the thousand years. So this can cover crimes, punishments and policing and focus on the reasons for this. So it talked to you about the nature of, which means the type of something, um, perhaps in that 12 mark question that's done over the last couple of years. And remember, again, it's unlikely that this is just going to be on policing at this point. So the first one, the four mark question. Explain one way in which the role of local communities in law enforcement in the medieval period was similar to the role of local communities in law enforcement in the modern period. You are not going to get marks if you talk about differences. So your opening sentence then needs to state the difference or similarity depending upon what's in the question. The next example is from the first era identified in the question. And you're going to link it back to the point made in your first sentence. Then the final sentence from the final era and link it back to the point made in that first sentence there again. So the ones that they might have uh, included here, in both periods the community was expected to report crimes. In the medieval period people were expected to raise the hue and cry and the modern phone tip lines and websites encourage reporting a suspicious activity to the police so that criminals can be caught. Uh, in both periods the local community are expected to uphold the law. The tithing system in the medieval period made men responsible for each other's good behaviour. Neighbourhood watch schemes aim to deter criminals by suggesting the area is closely monitored. So there should be five minutes maximum on that question um, following that structure. Right, the next one, explain why there were changes in the way that religion affected law enforcement in the years 1000 to 1700. Uh, you may use the following in your answer, trial by ordeal, accusations of witchcraft. You must also use information of your own. So that bit which says you may use the following in your answer, if you don't like those two, if you don't know them, pick something else that you know helps answer the question. This is a three paragraph answer, no introduction. Bullet points on the question are normally the best examples, so they normally try and pick out the ones that are going to help you answer the question. You must have more than those two points or you limit your marks. Um, and we're going to start each paragraph with our answer to the question. The knowledge is then going to support that. And then we're going to link it back to the question. So if we look at the mark scheme, it talks about an analytical explanation, which is directly consistent, uh, directly consistently at the conceptual focus of the question. Accurate and relevant information is precisely selected to address the question. Key issues with people here is they literally see trial by ordeal. They write everything they know about trial by ordeal and don't link it to the question. So if we are thinking, explain why there were changes in the way that religion affected law enforcement, we could say... Um, for example, uh, that the use of trial by ordeal uh, ends because of the church's attitude in 1215, so that changes it. Uh, clergy were forbidden to participate. Henry III abolished its use in 1219 as legal trials by jury became more common. Uh, religion is an important way to reinforce political and social ideas. Um, so accusations of witchcraft are there during the importance of... Um, how important that was to the monarchs if we think about James I. Uh, we think about the English Civil Wars in the time of chaos, you're scapegoating uh, the old vulnerable women. Um, there's a concern about the abuse of the benefit of the clergy, the right of sanctuary. Some people wrote about sanctuary um, during the later Middle Ages, so the church's role offering protection declined, and that went out with Henry VII, where the challenges to the throne were using the church to escape him. Um, religion is sometimes used as a justification for rebellion, and therefore heresy became a crime that was punished by the state and not the church, because the church are kinder. Uh, link between religion and political authority strengthened during the Reformation, leading to new laws to enforce religious conformity. So in other words, you're going to follow that religion of the king or queen. And the church's role in propaganda and law enforcement increased during the Reformation period as it's used to remind people of their duty of obedience. So this one was quite a difficult question, um, but I think things like God being the judge um, and then kind of changing it to trials by jury 
um, removes that element of the church being involved in that law and order and makes it more of a state crime. And people could link that with Henry VIII later on um, in saying that obviously he takes over the Church of England, so all crimes become state crimes now. Um, so remember, start each paragraph with your answer to the question. So start with one of those kind of points that you can see in the mark scheme there. Then select the specific knowledge that proves that and link that back to how that proves it in those paragraphs. No introduction, no conclusion. Each paragraph is really focused on how it answers the question. And then finally, the last questions. Um, so I've picked the specialisation one. Uh, as most people did that. Specialisation has been the most significant development in the nature of policing work in the years since the creation of the Metropolitan Police. How far do you agree? You may use the following, CID and radios. Uh, you must use information of your own. So here we've got the spelling, punctuation and grammar. Learners spell and punctuate with consistency and accuracy. Uh, they use the rules of grammar with effective control and learners use a wide range of specialist terms. So that's important that you're using those key terms um, that you're going to do. Here, for the content, I'll just read that before we talk about the structure. The creation of CID in 1878 separated detectives who would investigate serious crimes from the ordinary policemen. Dog units are introduced in the 1920s, used to track down criminals, more recently to detect drugs. The dog handlers received special training. In 1965, the special patrol group set up by the police took over responsibility for the, from the army for dealing with civil disturbances. The work requires special equipment and additional training. And in 1971, the anti-terror squad or bomb squad is set up to deal with terrorist threats. This requires specialist training and equipment. Countering that, um, personal radios for police officers are introduced in the 1960s, which allows them to communicate while on patrol and makes policing more effective. The use of computers makes it possible for information to be shared effectively <coughs> um, and has meant that routine police work involves desk work as well as the beat. New laws have changed the nature of policing work as police are expected to deal with offences such as hate crimes where there's no physical damage been done, and use of forensic science has made the police more effective as the analysis of fingerprints, ballistics, blood spatter and DNA can lead to conviction. So looking at what you've got to do then for that top marks, an analytical explanation is given, directed consistently at the focus of the question, accurate and relevant information is precisely selected, um, and you show wide ranges there, and your criteria for the required judgment are justified and applied in the process. So you could say, Yes, specialisation has been the most significant development in the nature of police, or you could link it with technology, or you could link it with science. So you could have those three kind of key factors that are there. So you need an introduction on this one, but no more than two to three lines. What is your argument? What's your answer to the question? Do not change it from the one uh, by the time you get to your conclusion. That seems to be a common thing. I personally, if I didn't know what I was going to say, might leave my introduction to the end and then come back and write that one sentence at the end. But obviously you need to leave space on your paper. So bullet points again are normally the best, but you can use your own. Um, must have one example of your um, own or um, you're going to limit those marks. So you can't just include the CID and the radios, you need others. Start each paragraph with your answer to the question. Um, so yes, it was the most significant development and why. So use that knowledge then to back up that. So what was it about CID that meant that specialisation was really important? You could bring in the dog squads, the bomb squads, etc. You know, it's giving, it's making the police effective. They can focus in on one area. They can really target the criminals in those areas. And, you know, they, as time goes on, it means they can broaden out and look at things like cybercrime and those kinds of things and be real specialists in the area and you're more likely to catch the criminals. Link that back to the question again, like I said, like more likely to catch the criminals, more likely to be effective. You must argue, so you must get to your next point and then, or end your point and say, therefore suggesting that this was particularly significant, not particularly significant, etc. Then come back to that at the start of the next paragraph. So why is the next one more or less significant? Um, Follow the same structure again. So start with your argument, select the pieces of knowledge and link those back to why they show its significance. So it could be that they had a long-term change. It could be that they're broad. It could be that they make things effective. Um, it could be that actually they reduce the number of police on the beat, so it's not a positive. Um, and then do that for a third paragraph and then your conclusion. Must be the same argument as overall. Okay, don't just suddenly go, oh yeah, I've disagreed with it all the way through, but actually I'm going to say, yes, specialisation was the most important thing. So your conclusion, no new evidence. 
what's the answer and what's convinced you the most and that's it okay that will get you go back to those top marks um, which is looking at that following through you've created a criteria for judgment you've justified it you've applied it throughout um, and you can see in each area of the mark scheme it says no access to level four for answers that don't go beyond the two prompted in the stimulus um, in level three maximum 11 marks for those that don't go beyond those prompted by the two bullet points maximum seven marks in level two for those that don't go by those two bullet points so you really must make sure that you've got a third paragraph of your own and I would probably keep thinking of the key themes when I look at this question of specialisation, science and technology and try and make sure, because obviously technology is there with radios, I try and bring in science and bring in forensics and say actually you can apply um, issues later on and you can resolve cold cases. So someone, for example, can be stored in the DNA database and it can resolve a crime from the 1980s or 1990s as recently happened. Okay, so what you need to do is go through each question match it up to the questions on your OneNote and write your points for how you're going to improve your answers.